Hello and welcome back to Simon's Rants. I'm Simon, and today we're talking about 20 roles that Jim Carrey almost played. So in reality, there's a lot more than 20 roles that he almost played, and there's probably even more that we don't know about, but I just wanted to pick 20 roles that I either wish he did play, or I'm curious to see what he would have done with the role. I came up with this list because of actually number 20 on this list. Ricky Stenicki! The best friend we never had. If you don't know what this movie is, it's coming out in about a month, and it looks Awful. Nobody seemed to know it was happening. I didn't know it was happening, but I knew that this script was out there and existed because for over a decade, it was on Jim Carrey's IMDb page as in development, and it just never happened. I guess it just kept getting delayed and delayed and delayed because the script wasn't good enough and nobody was willing to sign off on it, and so eventually, Jim Carrey, now that he's somewhat retired, he's now apparently going to be in Sonic the Hedgehog 3, but other than that, it doesn't seem like he's doing anything they gave the role to John Cena who apparently has a much lower standard for what kind of movies he'll be in so no I don't wish Jim Carrey was in this movie because it looks so bad I don't think he could even make it funny so that's why it's last on this list number 19 Scooby-Doo Warner Brothers began development of a live-action Scooby-Doo movie all the way back in 1996 with Jim Carrey attached to play Shaggy. However, production delays moved it all the way back to 2002 and Jim Carrey aged out of the role and so it went to Matthew Lillard. I am moderately curious to see what Jim Carrey would have done with the role of Shaggy, but really, I don't miss that he didn't play him. I think Matthew Lillard was phenomenal in the role. I think he was perfect for the role. I can't think of anyone else in the world who could have played Shaggy in a live action movie better than Matthew Lillard did. So as much as I love Jim Carrey, I'm not really bummed that he missed out on this. I think a movie back in the 90s wouldn't have worked as well, and I don't think Jim Carrey would have been really the right fit for Shaggy, honestly. Number 18, Pirates of the Caribbean. Before Johnny Depp was attached to play Jack Sparrow, they offered the role to Jim Carrey, who turned it down because they weren't offering enough money. And I'm also okay with that. Jim Carrey is a phenomenal actor. I think he's got a lot of range, but I don't trust that he would have done the right thing with Jack Sparrow. Jack Sparrow's character, the whole of the first Pirates of the Caribbean was very loosely scripted. It was kind of just a hodgepodge of ideas that the people involved with making it and acting it out kind of felt out how to make it in their own image. And I think Johnny Depp made the perfect Jack Sparrow. Now, granted, Johnny Depp kind of ruined the rest of his career by turning into Jack Sparrow and making every role he played after that a version of him, but uh, he was perfect for that role. That was like a once-in-a-lifetime thing where that was what Johnny Depp was like made to do, was play Jack Sparrow. So, I like Jim Carrey a lot. That role just wasn't, I don't think, right for him. Number 17. Elf. Elf began development back in the 90s as well, so it only made sense to put the most obvious actor in the lead role with Jim Carrey. But production was delayed, and so Jim Carrey lost interest and moved on to other projects, and so Will Ferrell came in. Being a bit of a gamble at the time, he wasn't that big yet, and ended up being perfect for the role. And people have talked about this a lot before. I'm not the first to talk about what if Jim Carrey was an elf, and I think, once again, he could have been good in this role. I think he would have been pretty good in this role, but there's something about Will Ferrell's portrayal of Buddy the Elf that I think would have been lacking in Jim Carrey's, and that was the childlike innocence, the way he just made Buddy so likable, despite how stupid he was. And I'm not saying Jim Carrey couldn't have done that, because seeing how he portrayed Lloyd as very stupid, yet still somewhat endearing, I think he could have done that with Buddy the Elf, but I it just... It probably, it just, it feels weird to think about Jim Carrey in that role. Will Ferrell was just so perfect that even if Jim Carrey was really, really, really good, it still would be a step down. Once again, not because Jim Carrey is bad, Will Ferrell was just perfect for that role. Number 16, Toy Story. There's some debate between whether Jim Carrey turned down Pixar for not offering enough money, or if Pixar turned down Jim Carrey because they didn't think he fit the role, but regardless, the role went to Tim Allen. And to me, the idea of swapping out Tim Allen for Jim Carrey it just doesn't work to me. It's hard to say what he would have done with the character. When I try to picture Jim Carrey being Buzz Lightyear, 
it completely throws off the whole vibe. Like, I, I can't see him and Tom Hanks riffing back and forth together. That doesn't sound right. Maybe he could because he is such a good actor. It really depends on the director and the writers, which direction they push him in. I don't know that they would have given him the proper direction to be the best version of Buzz Lightyear he could have been. And so I think, therefore, Tim Allen, like I said, I just, I can't picture anybody but Tim Allen in that role. Number 15. Chaplin. Jim Carrey auditioned for the title role in Chaplin, but ultimately lost to Robert Downey Jr., who went on to be nominated for several awards. And I'm okay with that. I think Jim Carrey is an amazing impressionist, and I love to see his take, his serious take, of impersonating other actors or other people. I think he's extremely good at that. Oftentimes, his impersonations are for comedic effect, but when he actually wants to do a serious impression, a la Andy Kaufman, it blows your mind at how accurate and how good it is. And so I haven't ever seen him do an impression of Chaplin, but I tend to believe he could have been really good at it. However, he doesn't look anything like Chaplin, and he's also far too tall for the role. Robert Downey Jr., who is not typically an impressionist, but is a great actor, not only was able to take on the personality of Chaplin extremely well, he just naturally looked a lot like the guy, so that benefited him a lot and probably helped in him winning that audition. So, once again, I wouldn't hate seeing Jim Carrey attempt this role. I'd be very curious to see what he would do uh, on a serious attempt at being Chaplin, but the guy who did it <laughs> was so good that I'm not wishing anybody else did, no matter who they are. Number 14, The Three Stooges. The Ferrelli brothers set out to make a remake of The Three Stooges a long time before they actually did. In fact, Dumb and Dumber was an homage to The Three Stooges. They just couldn't secure any sort of rights to The Three Stooges and so went with two different dumb characters, but they'd been wanting to make a Three Stooges movie for a long time, and Jim Carrey was attached to play Curly. But due to production delays, Jim Carrey ended up backing out of the role because at his age, he didn't think it was a good idea for him to gain the weight necessary to play Curly, and certainly didn't want to just wear a fat suit in order to play the role. This one I am torn on a little bit because I think Jim Carrey could have done a pretty good job at playing Curly as long as the writers and directors made sure to keep him in the right zone. Jim Carrey, as with any other improvisational comedian, goes in a million different directions, and it is the job of the director to make sure that he stays going in the right direction. If you're going for a serious take on a character, now granted it is a comedy, The Three Stooges is a comedy, but if you want an accurate impression and take on this character, you have to make sure that you are keeping the impression and the jokes in line with the real person and character you're basing your version off of. And so I think in the end, Will Sasso, despite being massively too tall to play the role of Curly, ended up being a great choice for playing Curly. In the end, I think the Three Stooges movie made by the Frelly Brothers isn't as bad as most people say it is. I think all around it does a pretty decent job of paying homage to the Three Stooges. It's not a great movie, but they do okay, and I don't think it would have been any better with Jim Carrey in it, and I don't think it would have been any worse either. I am definitely very curious to see what Jim Carrey could have done with the role, but I think Will Sasso was perfectly serviceable as well. Either way, I think the movie would have just been okay, like it is, but I would have enjoyed seeing Jim Carrey in the role, but obviously understand why he wasn't. Number 13, Get Smart. Jim Carrey also backed out of this role due to production delays, and ultimately the role went to Steve Carell. And once again, I think that's fine. I think the movie's really funny, and I think Steve Carell was perfect for the way that they decided to take his character. But also, I've never seen the original show that they're basing it on, so I don't know how accurate Steve Carell's take on it was. And I've got a good idea of what I think Jim Carrey would have done, but I don't know how accurate that would have been either. So in my head, I mean, I'm fine with Steve Carell. It wasn't like a great comedy. It was pretty good. And I think Jim Carrey is equally funny to Steve Carell, so also could have been great in this role. So, I mean, I'm fine. Either way would have been fine. It is kind of just your basic comedy spy movie. Feels like a lot of other movies. And I think Jim Carrey could have done one as well. But what we got was good, so I'm fine with it how it is. I don't know. <laughs> I'm kind of indifferent on this one, I guess. We're at the middle of the list, so that makes sense. Number 12. 
Joe somebody. This one, Jim Carrey just flat out turned down. I, I think he didn't find the script very funny, and that's fair, because I don't find the movie very funny either. And once again, this is another role that ended up going to Tim Allen, and I think Tim Allen tried to make the movie funny. I don't find Tim Allen very funny, so I think he struggled to lift up a poor script and make it funny on his own. But Jim Carrey has done that multiple times. Granted, later in his career, he's kind of struggled with that. Like Mr. Popper's Penguins, he wasn't able to make that funny on his own. But that was kind of his M.O. early on, was taking bad scripts and making them funny on his own. So I think he could have made this movie funnier than it was. Would it have been a classic? Probably not that either. But he could have probably elevated it to a decent movie. Number 11, Phone Booth. Jim Carrey was originally attached to play the lead in Joel Schumacher's Thriller, but eventually backed out because he felt like the role wasn't right for him. I guess at the time, he just wasn't ready to be in a thriller. And I wish he didn't. I, I would be very curious to see how he would have played this role. And I know we eventually got to see him be in a different thriller by director Joel Schumacher in the number 23. And based on how that turned out, it probably wouldn't have turned out very well in this one either. But... I still would have enjoyed seeing him in this role, and I would have enjoyed seeing what his take on this role would be. And frankly, I think the number 23 turned out poorly because of a bad script, not because of his bad acting. And this movie already had decent reviews, and I think that with Jim Carrey in the lead, it could have helped the movie because it would have been like, oh, that's interesting. Jim Carrey is trying something new and different. I don't know if it actually would have helped the movie be better or not. I mean, Colin Farrell is already a pretty good actor, so Jim Carrey's not going to be leagues above him or anything but it definitely would have made me more interested in the movie and go out of my way to see it. I also think it just would have been a really interesting acting exercise for Jim Carrey. Not only would it have been the first thriller of his career, but it would have been a tiny phone booth sized stage to work it out on where he wouldn't be able to chew up the scenery and all of that when he's stuck in this little like three foot by three foot area. I think that would have really challenged him at that point in his career and would have been really interesting to see. Number 10, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Jim Carrey was an unknown actor when he auditioned for this movie, and production ended up going with a much better known actor in Matthew Broderick. And I don't really like Ferris Bueller's Day Off. I know it's a classic, I know it's like the quintessential coming of age story, but I just never really got it. And one of the biggest reasons I didn't get it was because I found Matthew Broderick's performance so bland and boring and flat. And now I know. <laughs> Back in the 80s, Jim Carrey's acting wasn't anything special. We see him in Once Bitten, and he's fine, but he definitely wasn't the great actor he ended up being yet. So I get why he didn't get this role, especially considering, like I said, Matthew Broderick was a known actor at the time, but I think he could have added a little bit of spark to this movie that would have made it more interesting. Now, I think probably most people are going to disagree with me because I think the average consensus is Ferris Bueller's Day Off is a great movie and Matthew Broderick is good in it, but... <laughs> I disagree with that hypothesis, and so therefore, I wish I could see Jim Carrey's version because I think it could only improve upon it. I would just be very curious to see what a young Jim Carrey would have done with this role. Definitely would have been a spark. It definitely would have been a little bit more exciting. Would it have been good? I don't know, but it would have been different. Number nine, Encino Man. Once again, Jim Carrey was a fairly unknown actor when he lost this role to Brendan Fraser during the audition process. And there was a multitude of reasons why he probably lost it. Not only was Brendan Fraser six years younger and probably more suited for the role because of that, he also just more looked the role in a lot of people's opinions, I'm sure. Jim Carrey was lanky, probably for the ideal caveman. They probably wanted somebody a little bit more filled out. But I think Jim Carrey playing a caveman that is now forced to live in modern society. I think that would have been hilarious for Jim Carrey to do it. And I think Brendan Fraser was fine for that role. I do like Brendan Fraser a lot and I don't mind his performance, but I think Jim Carrey would have absolutely gone wild with this movie and it may have done a little bit better, frankly. Yeah, it's not a great movie one way or the other, but it would have been a little bit more interesting to see Jim Carrey be absolutely crazy in this role of a caveman who has no idea how to act in modern society. Granted, once again, you need a good director to tell him when to stop and pull back a little bit, and I think maybe they would have been overwhelmed by his antics, and that may have ultimately made the movie a little bit worse, but with a good director, he definitely could have made the movie better. So, I don't know which way it would have gone, but I definitely am curious and wish I could have seen what he would have done with it. Number 8, 
Bewitched. Before the role ultimately went to Will Ferrell, it was first offered to Jim Carrey, who had to turn it down because of conflicting schedules with Fun with Dick and Jane. Now, this seems to be the right choice because a lot of people really like Fun with Dick and Jane. It's somewhat of a cult classic, and the Bewitched movie is pretty universally hated. But I actually really like the movie. I think it's pretty good. Granted, I didn't watch the TV show, and I don't know how offensive it is to people who do like the show, but I think Jim Carrey would have nailed this performance. I think Will Ferrell is fine in this movie. He doesn't really add much or take much away from it. I think having a better actor would lend to that. And Jim Carrey is a better actor than Will Ferrell. I mean, he's won two Golden Globes for acting. Will Ferrell hasn't. Jim Carrey also definitely has the comedic chops along with the physical comedy aspect that really would have lent itself to this movie. So yeah, I mean, th this is probably shouting into the wind. Nobody really cares because most people didn't like this movie and most people don't care about this movie. But I thought the movie was pretty good and I think it could have been a little bit better with Jim Carrey in it. I don't know how much better <laughs> but it definitely would have been worse so I would be curious to see what he would have done with it. Number seven Garfield. The role of John Arbuckle was originally offered to Jim Carrey who promptly turned it down because nobody who didn't think this movie was being directed by the Coen brothers wanted to be in this movie. <laughs> and once again I don't think Jim Carrey's involvement in this movie would have saved it from being terrible but I definitely think he would have been a better fit for the role. The primary role of John in the comics is to react facially to the jokes of Garfield. What better actor to do a lot of facial acting than Jim Carrey? There's also times when he's supposed to scream and contort his face and become a cartoon character, much like The Mask. So Jim Carrey would have been perfect for that as well. The movie ultimately kept it very grounded and made it very uncartoon like So if you want to stay away from that, maybe Jim Carrey wouldn't have been necessary for this role, but still, so much of John's humor comes from his reacting to what is being said by breaking the fourth wall and looking at the camera or whatever. Just having a funny reaction to something that is happening. If you're gonna have somebody be funny with just their face or just their reactions, Jim Carrey is probably the best guy you can get for that. Number six. Austin Powers. The role of Dr. Evil was originally offered to Jim Carrey who had to turn it down because of Liar Liar. Mike Myers does a fantastic job of playing Dr. Evil. I think he's absolutely hilarious in that role. I think it's one of the funniest roles of all time. And so I don't really wish it was played by anybody else, but if it was going to be played by anybody else, I think Jim Carrey would have absolutely ate it up. Because if you want an over-the-top, overacting villain, parroting villains from James Bond movies, Jim Carrey was like born to play that role. But frankly, we wouldn't have gotten all the same great one-liners and line deliveries that we got from Mike Myers as Dr. Evil because as funny as Jim Carrey would have been, he definitely would have been funny in a different way. So maybe everything worked out the way it should have. Number five, Meet the Parents. Jim Carrey was heavily involved early on in the production of Meet the Parents, including partaking somewhat in the writing, like coming up with the name Fokker. That was his idea. Originally, the movie was going to have a lot more physical comedy and be more shaped in the image of Jim Carrey. And I think ultimately the movie that we got was very good. But I, once again, I would just be very curious to see what Jim Carrey would have done with that role. I think Ben Stiller is very funny. I think he's got a lot of great comedies, this being one of them. But Jim Carrey to me is just... I don't know, he's my favorite comedic actor and I would have really enjoyed seeing him in this role, especially considering that he was involved in the writing process. I just wish we could have gotten the original version instead of the version that had to be reshaped and retooled in Ben Stiller's image. Is the movie good? Absolutely yes. It's a great, it's a classic comedy. But Jim Carrey's version is just lost to the universe now and I wish we could somehow get it back. <laughs> Number four. The Secret Life of Walter Mitty. This was another movie that Jim Carrey was originally attached to star in, but due to production delays, ended up leaving and was replaced again by Ben Stiller. Once again, I think Ben Stiller does a fine job in Jim Carrey's absence, filling in that role. I think he is a pretty good actor along with being a pretty good comedian. But the thing is, Jim Carrey, once again, is a Golden Globe, two-time Golden Globe winning actor for dramatic acting. I know Man on the Moon won for the comedy category, but it is a drama and Jim Carrey's dramatic acting is why he won that Golden Globe. So twice he's won because of his dramatic acting. And on top of that, Eternal Sunshine, I think is his best role and that didn't win. So that's three performances, four if you count the Majestic, where his dramatic acting is some of, if not his best work. I think Jim Carrey is a better dramatic actor than he is comedian. I think he's a fantastic, phenomenal comedian. So to see him in the role 
of Walter Mitty, I think would have been fantastic. I think it's a very good movie, regardless of who's playing the lead, but I think Jim Carrey would have been even better. Number three. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Jim Carrey was almost offered this role, but Tim Burton decided to stick with Johnny Depp for the millionth time and cast him as Willy Wonka. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory is horrendous. And one of the biggest reasons it's horrendous is Johnny Depp does a terrible job of playing Willy Wonka. So one surefire way to make that movie better is to cast somebody else as Willy Wonka. Jim Carrey would have been a phenomenal Willy Wonka, I think. He would have been perfect for that role. I think he would have added a much more nuanced version of that character instead of some weird Michael Jackson ripoff. He could have been funny. He could have been sarcastic. He could have been serious when he needed to be. He could have been layered. And I know, it's a kid's movie. Would he really do that? Yeah, he did it as Count Olaf. <laughs> Count Olaf is a phenomenal character in a kid's movie that Jim Carrey played. And he could have added that same level of acting ability and fun, family-friendly comedy to his take on Willy Wonka, which would have completely reshaped and retooled Charlie and the Chocolate Factory into a much better and probably slightly lighter hearted feeling movie. But even if it maintained that dark Tim Burton feel, like I had just mentioned, he pulled off Count Olaf in a series of unfortunate events extremely well. And I think he could have done the same thing in this too. This is just one of those ideas that like, I'm mad that this movie doesn't exist. Because I imagine it, and it's better than the movie we have. And I'm like, why didn't that happen? I really wish that happened. Oh well. Man, I probably would have really enjoyed that movie, but okay. Number two, Master of Disguise. Jim Carrey was originally offered the lead role in Master of Disguise, but turned it down probably because the script sucked. Eventually he went to Dana Carvey instead, who ended up making... Yeah, a, a terrible, terrible movie. This one is very frustrating, again, because the whole movie's premise is centered around a spy who is so good at disguising that he disappears into these other characters that he becomes. And so, therefore, you want to cast a comedian who is a great impressionist and very funny and can do voices and faces and all of those things. And so, yeah, Dana Carvey, not a bad choice on paper for this role, but Jim Carrey is the straight the best and really only choice that you could go with and obviously they tried to cast him and he turned it down because it wasn't good enough which is just unfortunate i i wish they could have just rewritten it a couple of times and convinced him like hey you can make this movie good we'll make this movie good because it could have been really good and it would have been a lot of fun so much fun to see jim carrey do all of those funny voices and characters it would have been like him being on in living color again for a minute where he's doing all of these funny voices and characters in rapid succession for 90 minutes or whatever man it could have been fun it could have been really funny Oh well, <laughs> Dana Carvey, you tried. You did. You did try. Jim Carrey just would have been. Jim Carrey would have been perfect for that role, man. Come on. And the number one role that I wish Jim Carrey played is Howard Hughes in the Howard Hughes biopic. Yes, I know that the Howard Hughes biopic is called The Aviator. It was directed by Martin Scorsese and is starring Leonardo DiCaprio. But at no point did they offer the role to him. At no point did he audition for the role. He wasn't beaten out by Leonardo DiCaprio. It was an entirely different production that was in development simultaneously. Before Martin Scorsese came out and announced that he was making this movie with DiCaprio attached to it, Christopher Nolan was in talks with Jim Carrey to make a Howard Hughes biopic. But then he canceled it because Scorsese was making the same thing and he said, well, I can't make the same movie. You go ahead, Scorsese. My favorite actor was almost directed by my favorite director. But instead, we got DiCaprio. It's Scorsese again. They've done so many movies together. They could have done anything and it would have been good. They didn't have to steal the thunder of Jim Carrey and Christopher Nolan. Damn it, man. <laughs> now, once again, I know The Aviator's a good movie. I don't care. Like, I'm saying, like, I just, I would... Hmm. Christopher Nolan and Jim Carrey almost worked together. How amazing would that have been? I don't know how, like, I don't know if that resonates with you watching this as much as it resonates with me. Because, like I said, literally, my favorite actor, my favorite director, who never worked together, almost, like, we're this close to working together. And it could have been amazing. It could have been brilliant. That's such a fun story, an interesting story, an interesting character to 
to talk about. That could have been like Oscar buzz, you know? Jim Carrey won a Golden Globe for playing a real person and he was getting ready to do it again. Leo was nominated for an Oscar for that. Jim Carrey could have been nominated for it. He could have won, maybe. Actually, he couldn't have because Jamie Foxx won for Ray. And I don't think Jim Carrey would have beaten him. But regardless, he could have been nominated for an Oscar. He would have deserved it. Ah, man. Could have won another Golden Globe because, you know, Ray would have won for Musical or whatever. It sucks when you try to talk to people about it because they're like, The Aviator is a great movie. Why are you complaining? I'm like, because <laughs> it could have been their great movie. <laughs> Scorsese, great director. Love him. Leo, awesome, great actor, but Jim Carrey and Christopher Nolan, they were this close and I just wish it happened, dude. So, yeah, <laughs> those are 20 roles that Jim Carrey almost, but didn't quite play. And uh, yeah, like I said, there's more out there that I didn't mention or talk about. So what roles do you wish he played? Or did you not know about any of these? Are you glad he didn't get any of these roles? Like I said, frankly, I'm actually glad he didn't get certain roles like Captain Jack Sparrow or Buzz Lightyear. I don't think he would have done uh, the right thing, the right performance that those movies were asking for. So I'm not mad he didn't get those roles, but certain roles, I would have been really curious to see what he would have done with that role. So let me know what you think in the comments below. And of course, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you're new here. Thanks for watching, guys. This close, man.